Thank you, Frank. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I'm just going to call the meeting to order, please. Tonight we have a very special selectmen's meeting. We're going to leave you for a couple minutes and go into executive session. We're going to enter into executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining session or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Police chief contract. Can I have a motion? Uh, being 645, I move that the Board of Selectmen enter into executive session to conduct strategy, strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining session or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Uh, the item is the police chief contract. And after we come out of executive session, we'll go back into uh, regular session. Can I have a second? Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. We'll return in about 10 minutes. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Frank. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this very special Board of Selectmen's meeting for August 5th, 2014. I'll uh, go through our I'll go through our agenda. Um, 7 a 7 p.m. Citizens Input. Nicholas Kalnan will be having an Eagle Scout Award. We have topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance of the meeting. 705, Commander Leo Agnew and Michael Johns will be leading a proclamation for Foxborough being a Purple Heart community. 735, we have a public hearing for NPS LLC UMass Home Games. 745 p.m., Board of Selectmen Open Meeting Law Complaint Procedure. 8 p.m., Board of Selectmen Town Committee Handbook. 8.10 p.m. Town Hall Working Group David Feldman will give us a Town Hall update. And then at 8.20 p.m. Bill Keegan, our Town Manager, will give us a Town Manager update. We have the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Jim, would you lead us? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In my four years of here, this is the loudest That's uh, a loud that we've had. <laughs> <That's right>. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Okay, um, why don't we start with uh, Nicholas Kalnan, the Eagle Scout Award. Nicholas, would you like to come up with your family? Welcome. Congratulations, Nicholas. Um, I'm going to read an official citation from the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen, on the occasion of this Eagle Court of Honor, commends Nicholas Kalanen, Troop 7, Boy Scouts of America, in achieving the highest rank of Eagle Scout. The Selectmen would like to recognize Nicholas Kalanen for his Eagle project of planning and coordinating the restoration of the Burl School Nature Trails. May this recognition express our congratulations on the completion of your service project where you cleared 250 yards of trails of debris and overgrowth and put down new mulch. You also rebuilt two bridges, one 10 feet long and the other 50 feet long. Your project will provide a great means for teachers and students to be able to walk these paths and learn about nature firsthand. Recognition is also given to your achievements within the community. As a member of the Foxborough Concert Band and Marching Band, you played flute under the direction of Mr. Stephen Massey and Mr. George Murphy. For the past two years, you've participated in the Foxborough Community Band. We wish you success at Bristol Community College in Fall River, where you are working toward a degree in game development. This citation is given under the seal of the town of Foxborough this fifth day of August, 2014. Congratulations. Thank you. Debbie, is that the official citation in the center? That's right there, the blue binder, is it? And the blue binder? No, that's the no. purple heart. No. I no. gave it to the oh. sound. You know, we're oh. back yeah. on that one. We have it. Hang on one second, Nicholas. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Here we go. We have it. All right. You need to sign it. 
Oh, I can say. Excuse me. Couldn't have picked a better night to be here with all this Very crowd. Good. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Nicholas. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks Bob. Congratulations, Thanks. Nicholas. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, are there any other citizens who'd like to come forward and make any announcements? Sharon? Good evening. I'm Sharon Wasson. I'm the town planner. Uh, the planning board is holding what we're calling a groundbreaking ceremony at Payson Road next Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. It'll be an opportunity for uh, any of you that can come, any of the citizens of the town who are all cordially invited uh, to come and kind of see the before. And by next June, we'll have the after. But we'll have refreshments and uh, the contractor and engineer there to explain what's going to be done, what the schedule is. So I have a card that I'd like to give each of you. And if anybody has any questions, they should call the planning board. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Sharon. So uh, Sharon, I'll give you a quick plug just so people understand what the groundbreaking is for. You got a grant um, with the planning board that you brought forward. And it's to revitalize that kind of barren area at Payson Road you, with friend. new playing fields, parking lots, uh, things like that. Yes, sir. It's uh, the two uh, overgrown areas on either side of the new driveway down to the baseball field will be developed as multi-purpose fields. There will be uh, additional walking trails all around the back. Uh, it will also include uh, tot lot improvements, sidewalks, uh, handicapped accessibility, uh, some improvements around the concession stand at the baseball, uh, new pad for a pavilion over by the, plague, the tot lot, and other amenities. But the town was very fortunate. We got $232,000, and we're hopeful that this will get us close to complete We've had great uh, cooperation from the rec department, mm -hmm. uh, the, the DPW, and other folks in town, so we're all excited to get going. Excellent. Great. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. Great. Okay. Uh, it being about 7.05, I'd like to welcome Commander Leo Agnew and Michael Johns to come up front, please. Foxborough Board of Selectmen, town manager, citizens, all of you in the crowd tonight. Pretty overwhelming, actually, the number of people. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your continued support of veterans. Thank you specifically for your support of our combat wounded. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight is Foxborough's combat wounded, our Purple Heart recipients. And it's not enough for us to just put on the license plates, put on a sticker, and have one night of saying thank you. What tonight is about is our continued support, recognition, and provision of medical assistance and life support for our folks who have been wounded in combat. That's what this is about. And I think, uh, you know, our, our motto, Foxborough Cares, really speaks well to this. This is a Foxborough community effort. This is something that the community has really stepped up, reached out, and said, I have a neighbor who's a Purple Heart recipient. 
I have an uncle who I think might have been a recipient. And we've spent the last several months, about two and a half months, researching that. So with that in mind, on my office door, I'm going to be uh, displaying this, this sticker that uh, Mr. Agnew, commander of the Massachusetts Military Order of the Purple Heart, just gave to me. It'll be there saying that we support our Purple Heart veterans as the commander and his team do at the State House level. On the Foxborough team that's put this together, the Board of Selectmen, as I mentioned, as a whole, our town manager, Ginny Coppola, has done countless hours, weekends, evenings of research, along with Jack Othelette, our town historian, uh, Jen Savickas from, the Mass from Historical, um, Paul Godin, and, and an entire team of folks that have really stepped up and made this happen. So let me tell you about the process of what has brought us to this point. Some point in our past, and I'm not sure exactly when it is, um, Commander Agnew and his team sent a letter to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, former Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Mark Sullivan, took that letter and said, this is something we need to do, handed it to the Board um, and assigned it to Ginny Coppola, who has since uh, really you know, driven this, this train in the right direction. What started as writing up a proclamation to say that Foxborough supports its Purple Heart recipients then grew into a search, a search through military, veteran, and historical files uh, throughout town and the state, calls to the um, National Purple Heart Hall of Fame, calls to the Massachusetts and National Military Order of the Purple Heart to find out who we have as recipients. And that has developed into a list of 72 Foxborough Purple Heart recipients. We're here tonight to recognize those recipients. <coughs> it's important for me to say that 16 of those recipients are alive. About half of them are here with us tonight. And of that half of those, it was an enormous struggle to convince <laughs> these folks to come and stand up and be recognized. They didn't want to be recognized. but. Here's the important thing. It's not so much recognizing these Purple Heart veterans or our deceased recipients. The important part of this is really educating our youth and our adults, our community, and reminding folks to remember these folks have been wounded in combat. The suffering they've gone through started with a battlefield injury came home and their families, their community has supported them. Their family has been there all along. Our community now is putting a stake in the ground saying, we're going to step up and do better. We're going to be there. We're going to provide them services, tangible, real services, to make sure that we live up to the words, never forget. Okay, we're going to back that up with action. At this time, I'd like to introduce Commander Leo Agnew of the Massachusetts Military Order of the Purple Heart and his team whom he'll introduce. Mr. Agnew. Thank you, Michael, and the Board of Select. And I introduce uh, some of our members from the department. We have Tom Terrian, Betty Bunoy, Wayne Henry. We have three <coughs> lenders with us, our lenders. It's appropriate it took this time a year to uh, for our presentation because it happens to be Purple Heart Week. And as everyone knows, August 7th is Purple Heart Day. And on, we'd like to acknowledge the Purple Heart recipients that are present. And we have a miniature Purple Heart pin that we're going to present to them. And a special pin presenting to the families of deceased Purple Heart recipients. On behalf of the military order of Purple Heart, in the Department of Massachusetts, we'd like to present a certificate of acknowledgement to the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, being designated as a town in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to be known as a Purple Heart community, honoring all who made the ultimate sacrifice and shed their blood, defending our country in all wars from Foxborough, Massachusetts, and honoring August 7th as Purple Heart Day, dated 5 August. 2014. 
in accepting this plaque on behalf of the town of Foxborough and the Board of Selectmen is Chairman uh, Lorraine Brew. Thank you very much. <laughs> Commander Agnew and his team will be, will be staying. We'll be inviting up a couple other guests, and I believe that Selectwoman Brew has a proclamation to read. Uh, yes. For, uh, first off, I just want to thank again Michael Johns and his volunteer group and also uh, Selectman Ginny Coppola on behalf of the town for their dedication and hard work uh, to bringing this project to fruition. And um, Ginny will read a proclamation now on behalf of the board. Uh, resolution declaring Foxborough, Massachusetts to be a purple hat town. Whereas, on August 7, 1782, General George Washington established the Badge of Military Merit to be awarded to enlisted men in recognition of whenever any singularly meritorious action is performed. And whereas, following the end of the Revolutionary War, the award was all but forgotten. In military terms, it was suffered broken service only to re be revived in 1932 by order of the Secretary of War through General Order No. 3, which stated, by order of the President of the United States, the Purple Hat, established by General George Washington at Newburgh, New York, in August 7, 1782, during the War of the Revolution, is hereby revived out of respect to his memory and military achievements. And whereas the citizens of the town of Foxborough have great admiration for and the utmost gratitude to the men and women who have paid the high price for our freedom by leaving their families and communities and placing themselves in harm's way for the good of all. And whereas our community has a proud tradition of military service and members of our community have been awarded the Purple Heart as a result of being wounded or killed in any action against the enemy of the United States or as a result of an act of any such enemy or opposing armed forces. And whereas the Department of the Massachusetts Military Order of the Purple Heart has invited the town of Foxborough to join with other Massachusetts communities to, to designate August 7 of each year as Purple Heart Day in commemoration of the meritorious service rendered by its recipients and to honor the ideals so important to General Washington. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the Foxborough Board of Selectmen, hereby proclaim Foxborough, Massachusetts as a Purple Hat town, honoring the service and sacrifice of our nation's men and women in uniform that were wounded or killed by the enemy while serving to protect the freedom enjoyed by all Americans and be it further resolved that the Foxborough Board of Selectmen declares August 7, 2014 to be Purple Heart Day. Given this 10th day of June, 2014 by the Foxborough Board of Selectmen, Lorraine A. Brew, Chairman, John R. Gray, Jr., Vice Chairman, Virginia M. Coppola, Clark, James P. DeVellis, David S. Feldman. Thank you, Jenny. Okay, um, Mike, would you like to go back to the program and introduce our next guest, um, Senator Timothy? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. This effort, while it started small, it grew large in number, which is reflective of Foxborough's service. Across the nation, about 2% of our men and women serve in the military. And historically, Foxborough has sent about 8% of its citizenry into the military. Um, so I'm not surprised that our number of recipients is much larger than we initially anticipated. Um, this effort grew attention um, across several communities. I've had calls from uh, a couple of counties, several towns, and uh, drew attention from the State House from Representative Barrows and Senator Timothy, who would like to come up together to uh, say a few words and present some proclamations. At the same time, I would invi invite Postmaster and Navy veteran Tom Driscoll to come up. He also has something to present to the town. I present to you Senator James Timothy, Representative Jay Barrows, and Postmaster Tom Driscoll. Good evening. 
of the board and uh, veteran service officer, uh, extraordinary work, and the whole committee uh, that put this uh, together. I think it's evident that when it comes to veterans, the town of Foxborough pays very special attention, not just based on participation, but it's not just Memorial Day and Veterans Day, but there's several other days that the board, the town, and volunteers make an effort to recognize uh, veterans. And it's uh, very important on this day, uh, those who, this is the greatest country the world has ever seen, but freedom clearly is not free. And it's those who have sacrificed themselves and the families of those members who've gone over overseas in harm's way and come back wounded. So it's a very special day for me as your state senator uh, to be here. Um, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to the town of Foxborough in recognition of Foxborough's designation as a Purple Heart town and with deep appreciation for the service and sacrifice of the Purple Heart recipients. And be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate can, extends best wishes for continued success that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. Signed by Therese Murray, President of the Senate, and offered by James E. Timothy, your State Senator, on this day, the 5th of August, 2014. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me, folks. Very humbled to be here in the presence of these great folks that have done uh, an ultimate sacrifice and helped our country and keep us safe. On behalf of the Post Office, I'm here just to present to the veterans and the Board of Selectmen a plaque that we put together honoring the town of Foxborough for Purple Heart Town. It's a phenomenal effort that you've all done, and I sincerely appreciate it. And we have plenty of Purple Heart stamps at the Post Office. Please use them. They're wonderful as well. I can't, I can't thank you enough for being here. Thank you, and thanks for all your support. Postmaster Driscoll uh, doesn't get a commission on those stamps, but he sure is pushing them. We've been, <laughs> we've been using them at Town Hall. We've been using them at my home, and I know a lot of you are, too. Thank you. That reminds us of the importance of remembering our veterans, especially our Purple Heart recipients. Congratulations, Foxborough, on, uh, on being a Purple Heart community. I, I really have been overwhelmed with the stories that I've read uh, to see what you folks, the, the, the recipients, have gone through. And as Mike said earlier, to leave that legacy, to teach our children, uh, to all of us to remember that freedom isn't free. Uh, and uh, again, my congratulations. And it really is wonderful to see such support from the community tonight. So congratulations. I have a, a proclamation from the Com Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the House of Representatives. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers a sincere congratulations to the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, in recognition of your official certification as a Purple Heart town by the Massachusetts Military Order of the Purple Heart in your proclamation that August 7th of every year be declared Purple Heart Day to honor those who have bravely served our nation. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given today, the fifth day of August, 2014 at the State House, signed by our Speaker Robert DeLeo and yours uh, truly, Jay Barrow, State Representative. So thank you. Congratulations. I'd like to depart from the program for one second to invite uh, Postmaster Driscoll, our Senator, our Representative, and our, our folks from the Military Order of the Purple Heart to come up and behind the Board of Selectmen um, so that we can take a quick photo for folks that have pictures. We want to get a picture to put in Memorial Hall so that we can, again, put that stake in the ground and say, we, the leadership of the town of Foxborough and at the state of Massachusetts, are here to support you, the Purple Heart recipients and the families of, uh, thereof. So if, uh, if I could invite you folks to come up, and uh, if anybody's got a camera, take a picture. Thank you. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, two, two very important things are about to happen. One, you just saw, we are holding ourselves accountable to you, the Purple Heart recipients of the town of Foxborough, to be here to back you up, to support you, and we mean that. Everyone here that has stood up in this picture and all of you that are about to be recognized are one team, one community. We are here to serve you. Now what we're going to do is call up. Uh, I'm going to read down the roll call of Purple Heart recipients. There are 72 names, of which a small number are here. Uh, if there's a family member here is, who is here, a next of kin, please come up to receive a certificate from the, from the town of Foxborough. Purple Heart recipients, I would invite you to come up to receive a, a, a pin from the Military Order of the Purple Heart, a certificate um, from, the, uh, from the State Representative, State Senator, and that's for the recipients. So at this point, we're going to turn to the folks who are important here today, the folks that drive this program, why we are here. Mr. Warren I. Abair, United States Marine Corps, World War II. Hartley Alden, United States Marine Corps, World War II. By the way, I understand that everyone isn't going to be here. These certificates from the town and other proclamations are going to be in Memorial Hall tomorrow evening from 7 to 9 o'clock, where the new Purple Heart display is going to be debuted, and you'll be able to receive your certificate if you're seeing this on television. So I'm just going to try to run through the list. But do please come up um, if I call your name, uh, your name, or, uh, the, uh, or if you're the ne next of kin, someone I call. Um, third, Eric Anderson. United States Air Force, Korea. Terry Baldwin, U.S. Army, Vietnam. And I know he has a family member here. <laughs> Edwin Ballard. World War I, and that's worthy of a note because there was a period, um, as you heard in the proclamation, where the Purple Heart was not awarded, and that was up until 1932. 1932, this medal was reinstituted, and in Foxborough, it was posthumously awarded to three World War I veterans. One of them was a double recipient killed in action. Eugene C. Battles, United States Army, World War II. Frederick L. Bettenton, United States Navy, World War II. Arthur L. Brown, United States Army, Vietnam. Lloyd G. Brown, United States Army, World War II. I think we have a family member in the audience here. <laughs> Francis A. Cahill, United States Army, <coughs> Vietnam. Paul Callahan, Vietnam. Aldo J. Carbonetti, United States Army, World War II. Peter Connolly. Joseph F. Cook, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam. Joseph F. Cook, United States Marine Corps, World War II. Both killed in action. William Kosh, United States Army, Vietnam. Shane Cossett, Afghanistan. Robert Curry, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam. Philip O. Davis, United States Army, World War II. David H. DeSell, United States Army, World War II. 
Earl F. Dunlap, United States Marine Corps, World War II. Ralph Dupree, World War II. John Edwards. William Faria, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam. Frank Flagg, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam. Robert B. Flaherty, Army, World War II. Leslie D. Forrester, United States <coughs> Army, World War II. Lawrence C. Foster, United States Army, World War I, and Foxborough's first recipient of the Purple Heart posthumously killed in action. Lawrence C. Foster, United States Navy, World War II. Bennett B. Fuller, Army Air Corps, World War II. Mark W. Gris Grigsby, Army, Vietnam. Jerome Hanley, United States Marine Corps, Afghanistan. Warren A. Hindenlang, United States Navy, World War II. Clifford R. Holmes, United States Air Force, World War II. Joseph S. Holt, United States Marine Corps, World War II. George Kelso, United States Army, World War II. Gerald F. Kennedy, United States Army, World War II. Gerald Kinsman, United States Army, Vietnam. Richard W. Lampson, United States Army, World War II. Leo Landry, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam. Hugh McCauley, United States Army, World War II. Ernest McBurney, World War II. James P. Mahoney, World Army, World War II. Raymond Malley, Army Air Corps, World War II. James Mann, United States Army, World War II. Yes. Alan S. Martin, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam. Roy I. Martin, World War II. Richard W. Mason, World War II. Paul H. McAuliffe, United States Army, World War II. James W. McDavid, United States Army, World War II. James F. McNabb, United States Marine Corps, World War II. Michael Medvaskis, Army Air Corps, World War II. Ronald A. Meisner, United States Marine Corps, Korea. United States Navy, Korea. Gerald E. Metcalf, United States Army, Vietnam. Erwin Morse, World War II. 
Dominic Narciso, United States Army, World War II. Edward O'Malley, AKA Ted, United States Marine Corps, <laughs> Vietnam. Edward J. Parker, United States Army, World War I. <laughs> Donald B. Roberts, United States Army, World War II. David Robison, World War II. Glenn S. Saley, United States Army, World War II. Louis Seiden, World War II. Ralph R. Smith, United States Army, World War II. Milton A. Snow, AKA Pat, United States Army, Korea and Vietnam. Chesbrook Stoughton, AKA Chet, United States Army, Korea. These last two I had to tie to the bumper of my car to get them here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Floyd Tibbetts, United States Navy, World War II. Thomas Tribuco, United States Army, Vietnam. Everett R. Tripp, United States Army, World War I. Vicki Lowe, granddaughter of Mr. Tripp, is being shy, but she is here with us this evening. <laughs> Arthur White, World War II. Nelson Young, United States Army, Korea. Theodore F. Young, United States Air Force, World War II. Close to wrapping up this part of the Purple Heart Ceremony, tomorrow evening from 7 to 9 at Memorial Hall on the Foxborough Common, the, as I mentioned, the new Purple Heart display will be debuted with the proclamations you see here with the, the frame stamp from the post office, um, as well as uh, Foxborough's first Purple Heart medal and several others. I invite you to join us tomorrow night from 7 to 9 at Memorial Hall. And again, any proclamations that we did not hand out tonight will we'll have there, there tomorrow. Also, this Thursday, I invite you to, um, to pay close attention to the Foxborough Reporter, uh, where there'll be a, an extensive uh, research article uh, by our town historian, Jack Offalette, um, you know, um, highlighting many of, of the names you've heard called out tonight. And lastly, today is August 5th, two days from now, August 7th, which is National Purple Heart Day. We will have the flags around the common still with this Purple Heart flag joining the other Purple Heart flag on the common on both sides of Memorial Hall. And this will be uh, celebrated every year from now forward 
on August 7th, um, location to be determined, I would assume, around the common at Memorial Hall. This is the end of our program. Thank you all for your service. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for being here this evening. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, the most important people here are you, the Purple Heart recipients and family members okay. next of kin. We would like to get a photo of all of you. I don't know if it's most appropriate to do that outside in the hallway so you can continue business. Okay, so that's what we're going to do, and the folks from the Military Order of the Purple Heart will be joining us out there. Thank you very much. Mike, thanks very much for a terrific program. Commander Agnew, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. It amazes me the cool things this town does. Thank you very much. With you. did a great job and Mike um, okay so it being well past 735 we need to open up the public hearing for NPSL CU mass home games read the oh, yeah this, the public notice oh thanks summertime uh, the Board of Selectmen acting as the local licensing authority 
pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 140, Section 181, and Section 183A, and Chapter 136, Section 4, Town of Foxborough Revised General Bylaws, Article 5, Section 6, and also Stadium Rules and Regulations, will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, August 5, 2014, beginning at 7.35 p.m. in the Foxborough High School Media Center, 120 South Street, to review the applications submitted by NPS LLC for the 2014 University of Massachusetts home games. These events are proposed for Gillette Stadium. Application for these events is on file at the Office of the Selectmen. All, interesting pa all interested parties are welcome to attend. Thank you. George and Chief, would you like to come up to the table? George, go right ahead. Thank you. So, George, okay. you can put that on the floor, probably. Yeah. That's in your way. Uh, yes, George Bell, Stadium Advisory Committee. We met uh, with representatives of uh, Gillette Stadium uh, and reviewed the application for the UMass home games. Uh, in summary, there were three home games this year. Um, really, of uh, the three, one is uh, the most significant in terms of attendance they're looking at uh, between 20 and 30,000 for the BC game which will be August 30th <clears throat> then uh, the second game will be um, they approximate about 15,000 third game about 10,000 um, we did not see uh, any significant issues uh, we the second game is uh, an alumni game uh, the games, the first two games are at 3 o'clock. Uh, the third game, uh, they're not, uh, they haven't published yet. The second game is a um, UMass alumni game, so there'll be uh, a bit of fanfare. They, um, uh, they'll be holding uh, Amherst restaurants are, are um, welcome to provide a taste of Amherst uh, so the public health uh, people um, uh, have input in terms of how that'll be done and uh, in general the uh, from the fire standpoint public safety it's being staffed at a level two and uh, the input from uh, chief o'leary was to uh, uh, request if they could have a train uh, based on the fact that if it's a bc game that first game with about thirty thousand people that uh, there potentially be a lot of there'll be a need for public transportation I called the stadium today to get a, a um, update and they said that they have submitted the request to the MBTA and that it's uh, currently under review. Having said that, uh, we saw uh, no significant issues that um, the uh, public safety and uh, uh, police um, didn't feel comfortable um, and uh, we recommend for your approval. Thank you, George. Chief, would you like to? He did to a great job. <laughs> any comment? No comments? From the so, again, the games Sorry. have been, uh, I've been trying to be really good. <laughs> uh, the games have been really a, a moderate turnout. And so uh, the BC game will be the, the largest one that we'll see since UMass has been there. And we're prepared for it. How many games did UMass have last year? Six. Six, so that's down to three this year? Correct. Yeah, the, the new stage is actually nearly near, near completion now. The, the new the new additions that they made to the stadium at home, at Danhurst. Yeah. Madam Chair, just uh, just for the record, the uh, the uh, representatives from the craft group there was a, a miscommunication from our office to, to theirs, so they weren't aware that this was going to be on for tonight. Unfortunately, so they said they're more than happy to provide input if necessary. If there's any questions, that they'd be happy to delay it if necessary. But I just wanted to make that over. I, I didn't see any reason to to bring them out here. You know, they, they're trying to prepare for the. The next three nights are going to right. be kind of crazy over there, so okay. just wanted to let you make that make Thank you aware you. of that. Um, I see there's a letter here from uh, Chief O'Leary also saying that there are no, uh, he doesn't perceive that there'll be any unusual risks for these games, so right. uh, he also <clears throat> supports issuing the licenses. Any questions from anybody? <clears throat> No. I think we've always supported the, uh, yeah. the UMass games, and I think it was the, the public safety is the only concern that we usually have. Um, and, and having seen them for a number of times now, um, I, I think we welcome it, and it's good for Foxborough. Yep. So. Oh. Okay. 
want to close the public hearing? I move to close the public hearing on the application by Gillette Stadium for three University of Massachusetts home games. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Can I vote? And I move to approve the application of Gillette Stadium for the University of Massachusetts home games on August 30, September 6, and October 18, 2014. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Set. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, George. Have a good night. Thanks. Thanks very much. <clears throat> Get ready for Sunday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Busy week. Busy Thursday, week. Friday, Saturday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Have a great night. Okay. All right. So the next item on our agenda is the open meeting law complaint procedure. And we have draft number four here. And, um, I had submitted a draft comment, number five, you have the comment the also here. today. So. Right. I, I provided for the board tonight uh, draft up number five, if you will, which highlights uh, a change requested by uh, Jim and Brew to, um, a, to all, just alter the language with respect to uh, step five mm -hmm. at the very end. And um, Right. Um, you want just to address that? Yeah, the original language in the uh, proposed re uh, policy said that should the AGO determine that a violation has occurred, the decision of the AGO shall be final. Mm -hmm. Any efforts to submit new information to an investigation after decision has been rendered by the AGO shall be disclosed at a public meeting. Um, I wanted to ask the board to consider if we could just alter that mm -hmm. slightly to say, should the AGO determine that a violation has occurred, any efforts to submit new information to an investigation after decision has been rendered by the AGO shall be disclosed at a public meeting. The reason for this is, um, you know, I, I understand that um, sometimes, I, I believe that sometimes things may come out after mm -hmm. discussion that uh, may want to be uh, brought forward. And I think that, you know, the town manager and the town council, if they see uh, value to that information, I would leave it really up to their call to make that determination if some additional effort should be made if there is a particular violation. Um, and, you know, I think. I, I just wanted to leave that option there so that uh, people had the opportunity if they felt something really important was missing that they'd be able to go back to the town manager and town council with some new piece of information. It's not meant to keep things going or anything like that. It's just meant to provide a little bit of flexibility here and uh, again leaving in place the fact that it would be disclosed at the next public meeting. And I'm looking, I'm thinking of it more in terms of, again, it's the town council and the town manager deter making that determination so that, you know, we're informing the public that uh, some additional effort may be made. But again, it's just uh, to leave that option open, I think. So the, the way that it's worded, it says, um should the AGO determine that a violation has occurred, any efforts to submit shall be disclosed at the public meeting. So right. what's going to be disclosed that there's new information that was submitted or here's the new information I want to submit yeah, before submitting. before they submit it? I was thinking to leave that up to, again, the determination of council and uh, town manager as to the value or you know the merit of any new information in that way that decision is made independent of the board and that you know we hear it at our meeting and the public hears that it's happening but um, you know in that way it's not I don't think any one person can influence town council or the town man and the town manager to um, do something that some doesn't have merit basically is what but, I'm trying to say. But during the process of an investigation, mm -hmm. who's governing the channel channeling of information to the attorney general's office? Is that generally the town manager? The in town council. Oh, in town town council. council. Through, through, right. So, so sure. that information can get channeled all through one of the investigation period with 
without bringing it in front of the Board of Selectmen. Was it, was it the intention, uh, Lorraine, with respect to this change that if something came out after the determination was made? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. really an issue of the timing. So yeah. that because I think that the previous language said that once the decision comes out to be edu it's a final decision. But if something comes out that's rather significant, it's like, it's sort of like a decision like you know, you've held a trial, that the decision is rendered, all of a sudden some new ev evidence comes forward that, 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 could, that could really alter the, the outcome of that trial. And, and it could be related to the response that comes from the AGO will bring to light that there was perhaps some piece of information that they didn't focus on that would have made a difference potentially. And again, I, I leave that determination of that merit to town council and the town manager to determine if that should be brought forward. So that if, if that information were to go forward, would I then, how would that information come to the public? It would, it would be just to come to the next meeting as FYI, okay. you know, for This is, I just want, you want to advise the board that we've received some new information that we'd like to submit to the, to the AG's office. Right. And does the board then vote on that action no. at that point? That's, that's not what my intention is. My intention okay. is that if it's determined to have some merit again I by. See, I'm a little uncomfortable and maybe there's just a, a bad taste from what happened in, in the first two. But I don't like the conduit where individuals go to the town manager. Um, not to say it happened, but you can do influence on somebody because we're his bosses. The way that this, if you remember what happened last time, nobody wanted to talk about it. We said, all right, let the attorney general decide, and then we'll take his decision. So now we're kind of reversing the way that these regulations are. We give you, the onus is on you and town council to make the determination first. Mm -hmm. Then it gets submitted to the attorney general in, in that whole process. What this does is opens up the door for five people coming to the town council and to the town manager, I think is exactly what we're trying to avoid. It, there could be a situation where we do our best where you and town council work it out, you come up with a determination whether you're right or wrong, it goes to the attorney general. Mistakes are made or there's information that's not there. But if there's information that's not there, at this point, it's a public process. That information needs to come to the table <clears throat> and we need to discuss it. Because I, I don't want to leave sure. you in a position where mm -hmm. you're getting influence to do things. It, it just well, doesn't... I'm, a, I'm admittedly a little uncomfortable with, with that approach, but I, I think there's a way to address the issue, and that would be that if, if in the event that situation were to come, come about where if a decision has been rendered and new information comes to the, to the, to the board, I think it would be okay to discuss that in executive session because at that point this would be a new piece of information that would, that would be submitted for consideration at an adjudication. But at that point, the the complaint or the lawsuit or whatever you want to term it is passed. So there's no pending issue to bring it into executive session. Well, except that it could it could have an effect on the outcome of that decision. Right. You're considering an appeal at that right. point. It's effectively okay. an appeal. So so I'm okay with that. If if someone's yeah. has more information, we bring it up and say, I want this on the next agenda. Yes. Under executive session, the five of us. You the five of you weigh, weigh in on it and then to say, okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. in, in, that, in that way, everybody's in agreement that this information is worthy of mm -hmm. further consideration. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. As long as it's yeah. not, again, putting pressure on you from one person or, or five people coming from different directions. Yeah, I, I misunderstood the the, 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 and I, and I, that's my fault for not, for not picking up on that. But I think um, I'd feel more comfortable if we had that kind of approach. So. The wording could be, should the AGO determine it, that a violation has occurred, any efforts to submit new information to an investigation after a decision has been rendered shall be discussed in executive session at the next scheduled meeting? It should be requested to be put on the next agenda. Uh, and if five people don't want to put it on, or, or the chairman doesn't want to put it on, um, you know, I, I think that request has to be in public okay. to say this is what we want to do to put it on the next agenda. For, for executive session for review. Correct. Right. Does it, what does sense? that do timing-wise, though? I mean, are there certain I don't think time, there's, a, there's, no there's an issue limit. at that level. If okay. the issue is on the, on the initial review, there's a timeline. It doesn't mm -hmm. speak to really the issue of, a, uh, of, of an appeal of an process. Appeal. Okay. Beyond that. 
And it's really their call. They they could they could indicate to the to us that we're not going to we're not going to reopen it. Mm -hmm. It's really their call. They could say yes or no. So in, in for in the last example, they were willing to reopen it. They said they would if they I, they were willing to, to review it, mm -hmm. but they didn't ultimately say if whether it was going to determine that uh, change their decision one way or the other. No, no, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. They said at least yeah. they were willing to I'm at least review. I'm just saying review. that I, I didn't want to limit that um, process, prevent that process from happening. Did we just lose? Lose the prize, lose the hello. <laughs> Frank, can you hear us? No, I'm not sure he's there. Frank, you can hear us. Okay, okay. you okay. can hear us. Okay, okay. great. All Thank right. you. Just sound the uh, yeah, we'll sound change. We lost the, the okay. mic inside. So, <clears throat> so Jim, are you describing you want if some if one or five people come up with new information, make that an agenda item? I, I think so, because I, I, and I, I don't want to take anyone's rights away or shortcut a process, but at the same time, I, what I'm trying to do is limit the process, because it can just keep going on. And nobody's ever right. going to be happy, one side or the other. People that right. made the complaint, if there's no validity in it, they're not going to be happy. Right. So they're going to they're gonna keep pushing it. So Anyone on our side, if it's against us, we may not be happy. But there's got to be an end point. And I'm trying to say, if there's an end point, let's talk about it at the table and collectively to say enough's enough or yes, there's but some But I think validity. that's what Bill is saying. We would do that in an executive session. Sure. Correct. Okay. But yeah, the, the request right. comes to, publicly. The request to yes. place yeah. it on, on the agenda is public. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That seems fair. Yep. Right, so I'll, I'll that. try and wordsmith that. All right. Great. All right. Thank um, you. Okay. Just for the notes, if you can just fix two words in the first mm -hmm. paragraph, put an I in writing. Mm -hmm. And then step five, before the word compel, put the word to. So that again, John, I'm sorry. Um, first paragraph, Bill, the complaint must be filed in writing. You just need to fix that, the word writing. Mm -hmm. And then in section five, uh, last line, actually, I'm in. Okay. Third to last line, the AGO has the authority to compel. Right. Apart yes. from that, it's quite good. That. So, Bill, let me ask you, if once we sign this, and we focus on the, the selectmen, you know, the Board of Selectmen, but this is relevant to Planning Board, Board of Health, Concept, you know, all the dirty everyone, boards that yeah. we have, how is this information going to get disseminated to the boards? I'll send that on a, on a cover, cover letter to, to everyone. I have a uh, department head meeting coming up. Uh, next week, the week of the uh, 14th. Okay. So, um, and I don't want to keep prolonging it, but yeah, the other boards may have an opinion, or you know, planning board may see it differently. Do we want to entertain a process where it gets routed around, and if they have suggestions, it's it, entirely up to you. you. Know, I, I don't want to keep prolonging it, but th this affects us, but also all the other boards that run a little differently than us. I don't. I don't have a preference. I just. That's a, poli that's a policy consideration. I think. The, I think the, the policy ought to come from this board, and then we'll flow it down. But I think it's a. It's a good document. Okay. Okay. Is that the consensus opinion? Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Good okay. job. Well, that's Thank you for drafting that. Good. That was. It's good policy discussion, though. It yeah. is. We need a motion to adopt this. Well, we subject subject to the final, final amendment. Mm. You can do that subject to the final amendment. Yeah, that way I don't think it has okay. to come back yeah. again. Right. So I'll make a motion to uh, adopt the Town of Foxborough Open Meeting Law Complaint Procedure Draft 5. No, it should be Draft 6. Uh, with Draft 5 with the, with the amendment. amendments <laughs> on it to make Draft 6 the final. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Great, thank you. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the town committee handbook. Um, at our last meeting, we had some discussion on this, and um, there were a couple of final changes that were submitted. Does anyone have any uh, 
additional comments or final final changes or do, does it look good it looks good to me looks good yeah, to me then. No looks good. all right i have a motion uh i'll move that the board of selectmen adopt the latest revision of the town of foxborough appointed committee handbook um this is revision 722-2014 a second the motion jim seconded it all those in favor Aye. Aye. thank you thanks jim okay okay wow back on time yeah. all right town hall working group dave film david fellman mm -hmm. give us an update on the workings of the group yep so we're going to be working on um, some specific tasks in the next few meetings uh, primarily in this next upcoming meeting we're going to be looking at um, renovation in addition is there a true savings um, we have to weed that out before we go 100% um, new uh, we're going to look at tearing down the new uh, tearing down the existing and building uh, new what the impact is to operations we're going to start our public information kickoff uh, we've talked about a web page we're working on frequently asked questions that we can post we're going to be working on a direct link from the home page so there's no need to search for it uh, once you go on the website uh, and we're also going to put an article in the reporter i believe um, the thursday after our next meeting uh, in that article, we're going to lay out the process of uh, development. We're going to look at uh, time frames. Uh, we're going to put the link to the um, to the web page, and we're also looking at setting up a Facebook page where citizens can have um, direct uh, comments to what they're seeing uh, that's being posted. And the same thing is going to be posted on Facebook. That'll be posted on on the web page as well. Um, we're also with edits if necessary. With edits <laughs> if, if necessary. Okay. Uh, we're also working on comp studies. Um, we need to verify costs. Uh, we're not the first ones uh, to build a town hall. <laughs> I know um, Drake is in the in the process of, of uh, finishing their town hall. Berkeley is is undertaking the process right now. Uh, I believe they just broke ground. So we're going to be reaching out uh, to those communities and compare costs. We're looking at um, reaching out through different uh, avenues, through the uh, contacts that um, members of the working group have. I have contacts in the architectural industry um, and, and general contractors that we can reach out and verify unit costs um, and development costs. So we'll be able to start to post where we're thinking uh, these costs are going to be so nobody's going into this blind uh, the other thing is we, we need to start thinking about temporary relocation uh, for the town hall operations uh, during the process of uh, renovation or building new I, I think we're we're almost there in agreement with um, whether uh, town hall can continue operations if we're building behind but if we're building on its existing location we're going to have to relocate uh, the operations and it's not going to be a small task to do uh, i know there, there's certain members of uh, town hall right now they're are really want to kind of stay where they are until the very last minute um, and we're going to be looking at town owned sites whether there's there's something that we can either utilize partially utilize spread it out uh, and look at other options so we have a we have a lot on our plate coming up um, on Tuesday so okay. lots to focus on mm -hmm. so I, I just a couple additions to what David said um, which was a very comprehensive update but the um, we, we've had we, we have done some test borings in the parking lot and mm -hmm. uh, found that the, the, the uh, and those results have come back so we we uh, we we're pretty confident we should be able to build in the parking lot if we could. Excellent. Right. Which will really provide us an option to not have to move potentially. Uh, the second thing is that the the issue of relocation, of course, is an important one, and um, I think it's important to state from the beginning here that um, I know that they, we want to look at all town properties, but I I have a significant reluctance to use school property during the, as part of that equation. Yeah. And, um, and the reason I say that is because of the security issues. Right. Um, 
I don't know that there is, and I've, I've already had conversations with the superintendent and the assistant superintendent about about the space in the buildings, and they do not believe they have space. They they have while there may be the numbers in the schools are down. Obviously, I think that's that's a given. There are still programs going on in each one of those those spaces, so um, it's not that we have additional space to use. And then, then in addition to the fact that I don't know how you get around the security issue, whether it's it's a real security action that's that's taken to to try and address it, it's still a perceived one that's that's still a concern. So I don't know how you address that. So my 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 perspective would be to try and stay away from that mm -hmm. as much as possible, and not create a concern unnecessarily in the public about that type of thing. So. Um, so that will be. Um, I know that will, that's a that's a position that that some members of our committee you know, would like us to do and take a look at. But um, my position is uh, stated, I'm saying publicly here that I do not support that. So um, so the um, the second thing is that um, um, the, the third thing rather is that uh, I'm also uh, developing a, a a frequently asked question list which um, already some folks are reaching out to me now with, with lists of questions. I've prepared a list of maybe 20 questions already. Um, and so this is an opportunity for the public to really ask their questions. In other words, if you have questions about that you'd like to ha try and have us answer, we'll try and give us the best answer we can give. Um, we won't have specific answers in a lot of the questions uh, and a lot of issues because we don't have the, the expertise on board yet to answer those questions. But general questions about what we're looking at, we're certainly happy to answer those. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that what's good about that is that, you know, there's already folks talking on the blogs about, you know, what their, their perceptions are. And unfortunately, a lot of those perceptions aren't always accurate. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an opportunity for us that if people do have legitimate questions and they want to be, feel like they're part of the process, ask the questions. And we'll, and we'll try and answer them for you. Mm -hmm. That way we can try and uh, be a little bit more prepared mm -hmm. uh, each time we, we, we go through this process. Yeah. Uh, Bill, I think the point you make about the security issue with the schools is important, and uh, right. you know I certainly would agree with that. I don't know if you need the board to just give you a consensus message to take back with you. Uh, you know, I, I think it, it's one of the issues where I think we need to address up front because yeah. I, I don't want the, the committee to go in a direction that we know is going to get resistance, and we've got a lot of work ahead of us, and right. I don't want to spend time on that issue if, in fact, I know that's not going to be one that's going to get a lot of support anyways. Um, and not only that, but I, I personally don't think it's a good idea. I just don't. So can we uh, express consensus of the board to support not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. I don't know how you would segregate a temporary town hall <coughs> from active school activities. Mm -hmm. I'd say all, all of the easy. public projects that I've worked with, senior centers, community centers, town halls, that's the first thing. Well, we can, you know, move into this elementary to get a whole wing. Not one of them has ever worked. Getting no. in for the reason that you've said, plus five right. others. It just right. it, it's not. I mean, a good be idea. one thing if we had a vacant school building. Mm. That'd be a different story. I, I would absolutely support that. But we don't have one. And then, but and so each one of the buildings that we have actually has a program in it. And um, uh, you just never want to mix the two together. I mean, it's it's even challenging when the, on election days. Mm. So I I don't think it's a good idea to do that on a, on a regular town basis. Emotional. I, I just want to mention one more thing, Bill. In, on the uh, Town Asset Review Committee, one of the properties that came up as we were doing the review, there's a school, an old school over on Community Way that I'm not sure. It is owned by the schools, but okay. um, <clears throat> I believe it is being used for some other part-time purposes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's an opportunity there that may to be look an option. at that may be an option. I, a, I don't know. a portion yeah. of the people, perhaps. In, in yeah, it's area. it's the it's the mixing of the regu regular school day programs are the ones right. that I have real have serious serious concerns. I, I about. think they may have some evening activities like okay. you know karate or things like that there. That's fine. So that may be something. That may be an option. Do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll. I'll um, I just ask a question? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, Dave and uh, Bill, mm -hmm. you're you're going to be comparing um, costs with other uh, town halls that are in the process of being built or mm -hmm. have been built recently. Correct. We you also have an opportunity to talk to them about allocation of space, and if they could do things a little differently than they did. You know, just like, oops, we shouldn't have done it this way. We shouldn't have had the copy room here. We should have had it done. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, so-called kitchen renovation. You'll, project. You'll, right. <laughs> you'll find right. that. You'll find that in any development. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter whether you get yeah. all the answers that you're looking for. Yeah. When you build your space. Yeah. 
it's not going to work 100% exactly the way you right. want. Right, but, but sometimes you might be able to, uh, yeah, we'll, by we'll, talking to people, yep. you can anticipate, you know, maybe yep. some problems coming up. So that was my question. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Any other yep. questions? Okay. Um, I move that the Board of Selectmen resolve and direct the activities of um, all those parties that are involved in the um, construction and relocation of Town Hall uh, not to utilize uh, any um, active space within public school buildings. Or not, not to utilize any space within active school As buildings. As a temporary relocation. As, yeah, exactly. I have a second? I'll second. Second. second by Jim. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, thank you. Um, again, I, I don't like to do that normally, but uh, this is a case where I, I just think it's, the more we can get issues out of the way, mm -hmm. it, it just makes it easier to, for us to focus yeah. on the issues before us. And I think um, if, that, if, if, the, if the board felt differently, then I certainly would entertain that, but um, I just think that's, a, that's an issue that we really we ought to address. No, I think early. it's easy to envision how yeah. that would be uh, problematic. Yeah, yeah. difficult yeah. to manage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dave and Bill, I mean, I, this is really great how so many options are being considered and really addressed. The process is really excellent. Thanks, David. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item mm -hmm. is Bill Keegan providing us a town manager update. Thank you, Madam Chair. The um, First of all, congratulations go out to town engineer Chris Gallagher and his wife uh, on the birth of their new daughter, Leah, okay. who was born Friday, August 1st. She is eight pounds, 10 ounces, and 20 inches long. And both child and mom are doing, doing very well. So congratulations to both, Big one. both <laughs> them and, and, to, and to their son as well, by the way, who was, uh, I guess, taking a real liking to his daughter, so, which, is, which is good <laughs> news about that, too. So. Uh, this past week, I asked uh, Sharon Watson to give, um, to give me some assistance in, in pulling together an RFP for the former town fire station and, and uh, funeral home site uh, property. We had talked about, uh, I, I thrown out the, the, the concept of developing an RFP for those locations to see if we can actually get that process going. Uh, Sharon was able to identify a similar project that has already been done in Provincetown during this past year. Um, uh, this, this, uh, this project actually involved two parcels of land that were located adjacent to each other. And so we've looked at, looked at the RFP process and it's a very detailed process, but she has agreed to work on that this week and hope, hopefully we'll have a draft by the end of this week as to where we can start we can start looking at that to get that mm -hmm. process going oh, because I, I think now is the time for us to strike mm -hmm. while the iron's hot mm -hmm. because we've got now we and we and have already talked to Roger Hill about the uh, the, the idea of, of working with the sewer commissioners to get uh, sewer onto that location to that location so we can make the property even more valuable in that respect so we're working on that piece as well the uh, the assistant town manager interview process is beginning this week with telephone interviews uh, to, uh, to help narrow the field, I had over 100 candidates for this position. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, it is a great, great field of candidates. Mm -hmm. um, there is, um, I estimate that at, this, at least 20 applicants are fully qualified, and I will need to narrow that field down to about 10 that I will be meeting with face-to-face -face in our interview process. I already pulled together my panel. Uh, I've identified uh, the week of uh, August 20th as the week I'll be doing interviews, uh, spending a whole day uh, working on interviews. And, uh, and my goal is to narrow that field down to about three finalists and to uh, and then make a selection by the end of the month um, in hopes that we will have a person on board by, by October 1st. So um, it's, a, it's a gonna be a tough process, I will tell you. that I've, I've done a lot of recruitments over the years. This one is, was one of the most, um, has some of the best candidates I've seen. So I'm really, really quite excited about that. Um, I mentioned earlier about the frequently asked questions, the list of issues associated with the, uh, the town hall project. And the, the list is, is, is pretty, pretty significant, but I will tell you that um, I'm going to get that posted as, pretty, as soon as possible. But we actually need to start working on the answers to those questions. So we need to, uh, I don't want to just list them out there without, without some, some uh, semblance of, of response so we can start looking at that. But I encourage people that, that have thoughts to, you know, to ask the questions because we want to try and get those answers as, as soon as possible. Do you want to talk about that as an agenda item? I, I think we can, um, at that? some point we should. I think we should talk about that <laughs> because the, you know, there is a lot of information that um, we should be talking about. I mean, obviously the big question that people have is cost. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we're not in a position to give a cost estimate at this point. We, we've talked about the possibility of looking at a range of numbers based upon a square footage range that we, that we think we're close on. Um, but we're, we're really reluctant to put a number out there because once you do, uh, that becomes the number. Yeah. And if, if a number doesn't come in, then people say, you, but you told us. You know, so we, we have to be very careful about that, that we don't, we don't want to mislead anybody, but at the same time, we want to be as informative as we can and so that, we, so that people have a pretty decent idea as to what you know, they're going to be voting on, uh, when, even in the first phase of, of looking at the soft cost um, vote. So. Um, and then um, this past week, the, uh, week the legislature finished its session, uh, wrapped up its, its legislative session um, late at night into the, into the early morning hours trying to finalize some, some pieces of legislation, which they uh, did finalize uh, and are now actually have been sent to the governor for his approval. Um, there was bills associated with economic development, uh, which in that bill contained the legislation that would have uh, freed up the cap on, on uh, alcohol, alcohol licensing. Uh, that did not pass. Um, but what did pass is an early open on Saturday, on Sundays, for look uh, for package stores only. That wasn't that was actually a piece of legislation that was introduced by Senator uh, by by Representative Howard of Seekonk actually, um, who indicated that um, that has, has specifically come out with that information and uh, Jenny actually followed up on that, indicating that um, it's only for package stores only. It has nothing to do with with license holders for establishments. Um, there has been uh, gun violence. Redu uh, the gun violence reduction bill was was uh, was approved. The local housing authority reform bill was was uh, was was passed. The environmental bond bill was passed. The water infrastructure finance bill was passed. The solar net metering bill was passed, which is important for us because we have a, a project that's uh, that's waiting to uh, waiting for approval. Uh, the information technology bond bill was was also passed, and finally. Uh, the MMA is actually analyzing a swift shopping, sw a shift swapping collective bargaining bill, which was sent in, and I'm not sure they're not sure if uh, if they if the MMA is going to be supporting that or not, and at, the, at, the, at which point they'll appeal to the governor to reject it. Um, but all these all this legislation is actually located on the MMA.org site. If anybody wants to read on read the details, um, it's uh, there's some pretty gory details, of course. So. Um, if you want to get into that uh, and, and read it, read up on it, it's all on the MMA.org, www.mma.org, and it will provide all the legislative detail that you'd like to see. Okay, I, could I just have a question? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Just that you said that the Housing Authority Reorganization Bill passed. It and did. I didn't read the MMA, but just quickly, is that the one that takes control away from the local? They actually passed. They, 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 yeah, they actually passed a, re, a compromise measure, which um, uh, which passed both the House and Senate that would require the State Department of Housing and Community Development to create a comprehensive training program focused on proper management for all housing authority board members. So uh, they but also it, talked about some regional authorities as opposed to. But it keeps local control of the local housing. It does. Oh, okay, yeah, that's, that, that's that did not that did not pass. because that, that was, was they try. There was an, an attempt right. to take local control away, and That's so correct. I'm very glad that um, that didn't pass. But they, but they also okay. require now that each housing authority must contract with an external auditor. Uh, it must, but must not, but but must not must not use the same auditor for more than five consecutive years without a waiver. And DHCD will develop a voluntary regional pu public housing innovation program up to for up to four regional housing authorities, with the goal of achieving innovative models for public housing redevelopment management. Uh, and they, they would, these DHCD will also implement a centralized wait list for state aided public housing within a year. So, those are the pieces, the, the, the major pieces of that legislation. So, if you have further questions, feel free to call me and uh, I'll follow up for you as well. I just want to also, I know I, it's, it's late following the process, but I just want to say thank you to Mike Johns uh, and, and to, uh, to Jenny to the work that. They did, and of course the boards for all the support you gave for this program tonight. This was tremendous, in my opinion. So, very, very well done. Mm -hmm. So, I thought this is this is the kind of things that make good communities great, in my opinion. So, nice great, job. Great job, Jenny. Nice Thank job, Jenny. That's all I have. That was probably a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity today. It was. To get those people in one room. 
exactly. and all those different wars. You may not see the same people next year. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah. it's an annual event, so if there was yeah. anybody missed this time, yeah. there's next year. Mm -hmm. so, but Michael Jones did. Yeah, he worked. He really, did a really phenomenal. Hard. He worked job. really, really hard in that project. And so I, I want to give him a lot of. There were many that, late so. nights that yeah. he spent mm -hmm. researching it. So yeah, I know he did. He, did he a worked great really job. hard. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. We'll, all. Uh, thanks, Bill. Yep. We'll go on to action items. Okay. The first one is the reappointments of election workers, and I move to approve the. Uh, lists, the submitted list of election workers for the term of one year from September 1, 2014 to, to September 1, 2015. And I'll thank them for their willingness to serve. And I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I move to accept the uh, June 24, 2014 Board of Selectmen minutes. Uh, I just had one couple of typos. So, um, page three, Ms. Coppola asked of the planning board concerns in regards to the fire lane. It's the last sentence says fire land. To the fire lane, to the, in. it is fire lane. Fire land. Does not need to be repainted. Oh, land. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just Fire lane. The and then um, okay. in the next paragraph, Attorney Spillane noted that they are not requesting any changes to existing signage. That was it. I'll second that with edits. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I move to accept the July 8, 2014 Board of Selectmen minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I just want to make a special mention uh, to thank Diana Gray for all of the minutes that she took for us. She said in her note to us, howdy, attached, <laughs> <laughs> are the minutes, my last ones with exclamation points. So I just want to thank Diana. Thank still, you, Diana. There's still many minutes to go for other boards, though, by the way. So. <coughs> Yes. Uh, okay, I move to accept the July 22nd, 2014 minutes. Mm -hmm. I just had one uh, correction on page 7 in the town manager update. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, meaning law complaint. Um, John Gray voted in the negative. Correct. 410. Mm -hmm. okay. um, that was it. On, on page. Um, on page six, uh, this was the uh, following the discussion on the proposed referendum. Um, Lorraine kind of put it together and said, okay, what are we going to vote for? So I'd like to um, insert before, before it says chairman asked the board should they vote, I'd like to put in following a discussion on the proposed referendum question, comma. Because that was, it's not, uh, it's not reference that we had a discussion mm -hmm. on the referendum question. Yeah, that's a good point. And then um, where it comes down to the motion, the second motion, uh, motion was made by John Gray to direct 40 South Street for the new tall town hall site. And can we add in um, eliminating the need for a refer referendum vote to decide the location of the new town hall? Because that was also part of the discussion, and this just kind of clarifies it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other items? Um, and then on page seven, the, uh, Mr. Keegan and Mr. Cutler stated the board had until mid-August, September, to make the decision on putting the survey question on a special election ballot. But we had already voted not to really have the survey question, or was was there another survey question? I don't remember. So my question is, is that necessary to even put this line in? Or if it is, it's just out of order. It's, it should be in a different place. Do you get my drift? Mm -hmm. It's probably a little bit earlier than the, uh, yeah. 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 So the motion the motion that carried 401 should be at the end of that. Exactly, yeah. Uh, that, that's that the last action for that yeah. Yeah. item, essentially. Okay. So. Starting with the paragraph on page six, then the chairman asked for discussion. Mm -hmm. 
And then this line, he, this, this line here can be inserted here. right after that. Yeah. So we'll move those up to um, say the paragraph insert after Mr. Schle Schleier. Yeah, that would be that would be where it goes. Okay. And then just one last one on page seven, uh, just above where the four is one zero vote uh, to uh, to bring the matter to a close, where it says open meeting law complaint. Can we just reference um, uh, the decision by the attorney general on June fifth, just so because there's no reference to what the open meeting law complaint was. So this is regarding the decision regarding the, the office att of attorney general's months. decision on June fifth. Right. Get a second. So. Uh, second. As edited. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, these next two, I'm going to take them out of order. Um, the first one would be the resignation letter from the Recreation Committee. Um, I move that the Board of Selectmen accept the resignation letter of John of Jim Foley from the Board of Recreation and thank him for his service. And I'll read the letter. Mm -hmm. To the Board of Recreation, effective July 1, 2014, Jim Foley will not be returning to the Board of Recreation. I have for the past 14 years had the pleasure of being part of an organization that has made a positive impact on many lives in the town that I love. I have been able to raise a family that has been able to see and enjoy the great work the Board has been able to accomplish. The work that the Board has done and continues to do will be felt by many for years to come. I am very proud of being a part of that. I wish the best for everyone currently on the Board and those to come. I hope everyone gets a chance to feel and know, as I have, that the work that we do is important and it affects many lives in a positive way. Thank you for the opportunity to be part of this Board. Best wishes, Jim. And uh, we w want to thank Jim for his service on the Board of Recreation. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I have a second? Second. Second by David. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Jim. Okay. So then the um, the next one will, will be um, I move that the board approve the appointment of Jenna Strickland to the Board of Recreation for the term expiring May 1, 2017, and thank her for her willingness to serve. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next one is an, an invitation to a, um, a special mass, um, a special mass and thanksgiving to God for all the men and women who serve our communities as public safety personnel. This mass will take place at 1.30 a.m. on Sunday, September 21st, 2014 at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross. And this invitation was offered by um, uh, Sean Cardinal O'Malley. Uh, the next one is a notice from the Metropolitan Area Planning Council of the election procedure for the October 29, 2014 elections. Okay. Uh, the next is I move to approve the early opening of Jake and Joe's for the dates of the five Patriots home games that are scheduled to begin at 1 p.m. September 21, October 26, November 23, December 14, and December 28. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and the last one is I move that the Board of Selectmen sign the 40B application for technical review assistance for Wyman Village per the request of the Planning Board. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's it. All right. Well, that's the end of our action item. So, um, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody second that? You did. Aye. <laughs> okay. Good night. Good night, everyone. It was a great meeting. Thank Aye. you.